You are floating on a cloud, on a pink cloud. You are wrapped in softness. Your limbs melt into the cloud. You are relaxed. You are safe. That's how my mom would begin the meditation every time I came home with a migraine. I lay there in throbbing pain and agony, and my mom would spin this billowy, shock-absorbing, protective cloud. It softened the pain, and eventually, it would lead me to much-needed sleep. Well, there's a similarly divine and protective cloud that plays a featured role in Sukkot. You see, the Talmudic sages, Rebbe Eliezer and Rebbe Akiva had a machloket, an argument about a key verse in Leviticus. Vasukot tejvu shivat yamim. You shall, you shall live in Sukkot, in booths for seven days. All citizens in Israel, in Israel shall live in these booths. I placed the Israelites in Sukkot. Hold on, I'm going to go back. I'm going to read the whole translation. You shall live in booths in Sukkot for seven days. All citizens in Israel shall live in booths in order that future generations may know that I made the Israelite people live in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I placed the Israelites in Sukkot, in booths. What exactly were these sukkah booths? The Israelites lived in Oalim, in tents. What's happening with the booths all of a sudden? Well, Rabbi Eliezer declared, these Sukkot, these booths, they weren't booths at all. What were they? They were Anane HaKavod, the clouds of glory. God placed the Israelites not within Sukkot, but within divine cumulus cloud formations, soft and strong, protecting against all elements and enemies. Imagine there's a cloud to the east, a cloud south, a cloud to the west, a cloud to the north, a cloud above and a cloud below, just like every Lulav direction. But then there's one special souped-up cloud out in front. It clears the way. If there's a mountain, no problem. The cloud clears through it. Straight path. If there's a valley, the, the cloud puts in lots of, I don't know, ground stuff to make it flat so that the Israelites can clearly walk across flat surfaces. It's like a big cloud Zamboni. <laughs> Anane hakavod the clouds of glory, the ultimate symbol of security. This is what the Torah means by Sukkot, says Rebbe Eliezer. But Rebbe Akiva counters clouds of glory? What? No. This was no souped up water vapor. These were real bona fide booths. Just your garden variety, humble sukkah. When God brings us out of Egypt, God places us in the most exposed, vulnerable, exposed to the elements and fragile booths. For Rebbe Akiva, the defining and divine feature of the sukkah is fragility and impermanence, that it can be knocked over by a strong wind. When we came out of Egypt, God placed us in these sweet yet flimsy booths, not luxury cloud fortresses, which would have been really nice. <laughs> but unlike in a cloud in a sukkah, we have no illusions about the world around us. We're not buffered, we're not protected from the outside. And it's no coincidence that we build Sukkot at the beginning of the rainy season in Israel and at the beginning of the cool weather here when we feel more acutely the pinch of the elements and we begin to understand how fragile we and the worlds we build really are. Rabbi Alan Liu in This is Real and You Are Completely Unprepared, he writes, 
We sit in a house that calls attention to the fact that it gives us no shelter. It's not really a house. It is the interrupted... It is the interrupted idea of a house, a parody of a house, and it exposes the idea of a house as an illusion. The idea of a house is that it gives us security, shelter, haven from the storm, but no house can really offer us this. No building of wood and stone can ever afford us protection from the disorder that is always lurking around us. No shell we put between us and the world can ever really keep us secure from it. This year, perhaps we feel it more strongly than ever. Hurricanes, earthquake, mass shooting, destruction natural and unnatural, tearing up our homes, snuffing out lives, destroying any illusion of security or permanence. Wouldn't it be nice to be on a floating cloud? Just a few days ago on Yom Kippur, we were stripped bare in a fast from food, hygiene, fine clothing, intimacy. We were the thing itself. Through the words of the vidui, the confession, through song, our hearts broke, our spirits were humbled, we prostrated ourselves fully, we cried and we danced. Who was here? I mean, there. Who was there? Do you remember? We opened in vulnerability and we touched new kinds of inner strength, all in the span of 25 hours. From there, we walk out of shul, and from vulnerability and strength, we build the structure of the sukkah. The structure that says, yes, come, take shelter here, but you will stay open to the elements. You can't close off. You can't get lost in the false security of your home. That is all vanity of vanities, illusion. But for those of us who were there last week, whether you were at Romamu on 83rd Street or any number of shuls or shuls and churches, wherever you were davening, each of us grew, each of us opened, each of us discovered a new strength, even if you think you were just standing there or that your parents made you stand there for 12 hours of davening, there was something there was some moment of transformation. And all of us made commitments, not oaths, we know better, but we made commitments to do better this year in our relationships and in how we respond to the crises in the world around us. When we move from the synagogue on Yom Kippur to the sukkah out in the open, we say, stay a little, what's the rush? Something changed. I don't want to lose touch with what I discovered. I don't want to return to the comfortable, the easy, to veg out in the cloud because it doesn't exist. Each of us will face challenges every day. So let each of us bring all that we learned back into the world and invite others, those we know, those who we've never met, to join us in the impermanence booth. And it's painful this year to celebrate joy in impermanence when less than 24 hours after we lifted the roof off the sanctuary with Ne'ila and we all learned of the murder of 58 souls in Las Vegas, Impermanence. Alan Liu, again. In the sukkah, a house that is open to the world, a house that freely acknowledges that it cannot be the basis of our security, the illusion of protection falls away, and suddenly 
We are flush with our life, feeling our life, following our life, doing its dance one step after another. I pray that each of us be blessed with the strength and conviction to step into the sukkah, to bring the vulnerability and the strength, the growth and soul searching from the high holy days, and to begin the process of harvesting it in the world. I pray that in our deepened sense of impermanence and fragility, we open to each other, we give of ourselves, and we honor our IOUs. And I pray that you, divine sukkah builder, spread over us a sukkah of peace, not a cloud-filled peace, not a water vapor vapid peace, but a peace where we look through the roof and we see the stars, a peace that invites in all ushpizin, a peace built with all of our hands. <laughs>